This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, April the 23rd, 2019. It's the feast day of St. George the Dragon Slayer. He was a Greek-born Roman citizen who served in the Praetorian Guard in the time of the Roman Emperor Diocletian. During one of Diocletian's many persecutions of the Christians, George was ordered to recant his faith, which he refused. He died a martyr in A.D. 303. His legend is more fantastical. The story of St. George and the Dragon doesn't show up on the scene until the 11th or the 12th century, depending on your zip code. In that story, St. George stumbles upon a dragon which is obsessed with human sacrifice. He's also holding hostage a princess. George first tames and then slays the dragon, rescuing the princess. Now, this should sound pretty familiar. For one, it's the story in Shrek. But it's also the story of Typhon, of Jason and Medea, of Perseus and Andromeda, and a slew of other characters. As with so many stories in the era of traveling minstrels and theater companies, archetypal stories were often applied to local heroes. It's certainly possible that St. George was himself present for the defeat of some great beast or animal along the borders of the Roman Empire, It's also possible that his intercession was invoked by soldiers in the Middle Ages who did battle with a sea creature or a gigantic snake or lizard. However George ended up with the title, he is technically the patron saint of dragon slayers. So if that's you, happy feast day. Today is the anniversary of the signing of the Bayerische Reinheitsgebot in Ingolstadt in 1516. These are the laws and governances of beer in Bavarian Germany. Beer can have water, barley, hops, and nothing else. It's worth noting that yeast isn't on that list, which is because they didn't know what yeast was or how it worked. The laws also set the price of beer, dependent upon the time of year and the type of beer. Versions of the same basic laws are in effect today, which is why many German beers don't use the word beer on their label. Today is the birthday in 1564 of the Bard, William Shakespeare, arguably the greatest playwright of all time and certainly within the English language. Shakespeare was born in Stratford-upon-Avon and made his way to London first as an actor and later as a playwright dramatist. By 1592, several of his plays were on London stages at the same time, and he was well known enough to have critics in the press. He wrote at least 36 plays, with five more being possibly his. The list is disputed, of course, by scholars. He wrote 16 comedies, 11 histories, and 12 tragedies. Among the comedies, Much Ado About Nothing, A Midsummer Night's Dream and The Taming of the Shrew are probably the best known. Among the histories, Henry V, in particular the great St. Crispin's Day speech from Act IV, is unquestionably the best. Among the tragedies, Romeo and Juliet, Julius Caesar, Hamlet, and Macbeth are probably the most beloved. Beyond his plays, Shakespeare's poetry, in particular his sonnets, are masterworks of the English language. The Oxford English Dictionary claims that Shakespeare introduced 428 words and phrases into the English language, more than any other single individual in history. Among them are the words obscene, never-ending, laughable, downstairs, employment, shooting star, tranquil, useful, prayer book, lackluster, and birthplace. A poem by an unknown author was etched on his tomb in Trinity Church near his home in Stratford-upon-Avon. It reads, Good friend, for Jesus' sake forbear to dig the dust enclosed here. Blessed be the man that spares these stones, and cursed be he that moves my bones. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.